What's up everyone? Welcome to the heaviest show in the universe. My name is Kane Irvine and today we are diving into the first technical death metal album of all time. Peace of Time by Atheist. Death metal is one of metal's most unique and diverse genres, and tech death was the very first spawn of its apparent depth and power. It didn't take very long for death metal to dive deeper into its own inherent technicality and create this new genre, with this album being recorded in 1988 and released in 1990. Their record label at the time, Mean Machine Records, was going bankrupt. The band had to look for another label to release what would become an undeniable masterpiece. And that's where Active Records came in and saved the day in Europe, and Metal Blade releasing the album in North America. And right off the bat, we can hear the difference in rhythm and peace of time compared to other death metal at the time. <laughs> This is some signature tech death riffing that would later be used by bands like Obscura and Necrophages. <sighs> and let's not forget that this was their debut album. These guys were not seasoned death metal musicians. And they were way far ahead of their time and because of this they never quite got the recognition that they deserved from a wider audience. I mean, everyone was used to the knuckle-dragging sludge of death metal, and then out of nowhere, these guys come in and release this jazzy technical piece of work that, well, no one understood. But if it had been released today, man, people would go nuts over this. And everything from the guitar work to the bass, the drums and piano is incredibly well done, and it's no wonder this album is incredibly influential to those that know about it within the metal community. Starting with Kelly Schaefer, we see the immense talent that Atheist had in droves, especially compared to other death metal bands at the time. It's not that there were bad musicians in death metal, that's far from the truth. But what Kelly and the rest of Atheist were doing here was so next level comparatively that they single-handedly raised the bar for everyone else. His vocal performance was exceptionally clean and was one of the very first cases of death metal vocals being tonal in some cases, which was rarely seen in the scene up until that point with Chuck being one of the few exceptions. Even now in 2022, death metal vocals tend to be atonal, with some notable exceptions being Rivers of Nile, Opeth, Archspire, and some others at times. But his rhythms were very complementary to his vocal patterns, and at the time, they even took a thrash metal oriented turn in their music, like in the song Beyond. Kelly really is the motor that drove this band and does drive this band to this day, having writing credits on every single song. These guys were all super into bands like Rush and Merciful Fate and especially early Metallica and that shows after they put a little bit of dash of death in there to create this masterpiece of an album. Interview with metal website Metalchondria, Kelly said, and quote, well, Roger Patterson, as well as Steve Flair, myself, were just really huge fans of Rush and oddly merciful fate, and we liked the long, drawn out Satan's Fall long journey of the song. Maiden, you know, Big Iron Maiden fans as well, and early Metallica, you know, uh, really that was kind of rooted in that. And also having Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and all that in our blood already, just being raised in the 70s and 80s, so, but just regular metal was just too primitive in a way, and it was like really knuckle dragging. We wanted it to be more musical, and this definitely shows in their music. If you slow down their songs, they definitely stretch out to 7 or 8 minute on average like any Rush song. This album is basically Rush playing death metal. And what was so important about this album was the way that jazz music was seamlessly thrown into the writing. So many bands in metal just try to force progressive aspects into their writing and it just doesn't work. And I think one of the biggest reasons that it worked for Atheist on this album was the bass work by Roger Patterson and the drumming by Steve Flint. And this excerpt from the song No Truth perfectly exemplifies what I'm trying to talk about. <laughs> Of course, Roger Patterson tragically passed away after the release of this album, but not before being able to record some more amazing bass lines for their next album, Unquestionable Presence. And it goes without saying that Rand Berkey is an amazing contributor to this album and their other releases as well. It's rather unfortunate that he doesn't play with the band any longer. An album like Peace of Time truly leaves an everlasting legacy for those who have been able to experience it, and it shows to the point where Atheist is able to take decades-long hiatuses and come out of nowhere and 
still be known to those in the community. I mean, apparently they're even releasing a new album in 2022, which would be sick. This was one of the albums that set off the bomb that would eventually become technical death metal, one of the most popular and fascinating genres in metal today. And listening through on this 33 year old masterpiece really blows my mind. It just shows me how ahead of its time it is today because it still makes my jaw drop to the floor. Without this album, would we even have tech death as we know it today? It's a fair question. And that's why it is one of metal's most influential albums.